Hi, this is Kay Quinn from Fabricated Quilts. Today I'm going to share information about making your binding, applying your binding, and making it easy with the binding tool from Westerly Design. So let me show you real quick what we've got. The two things that we're going to use are the strip cutter. This is the locking ruler system from Westerly Design. And I've got some added thumb screws. These are an additional purchase to be able to use this. It comes with some screws that you adjust with the hex, but I like just being able to use my fingers. And right now you can already see that I've adjusted the width here to align right at three inches all the way down. So right here and right here, I've loosened this, I've slid this black bar, and I've lined it right up on this three inch mark which means when I cut, the width of the cut will be three inches. I'm making a three inch binding width because I'm going to be sewing my binding in at a half inch and three inch is the perfect cut for a half inch binding. So I'll just set this aside for a minute. The next tool that we're gonna use is the bound to fit binding tool. You can just see the name right down there. And it's got a beautiful little dog ear to be able to cut your corners and align your binding pieces really easily together. So I'll show you real quick how that works. I've got the edges of my binding strip already aligned. All the edges are nice and tight together and all of the edges on the long side are aligned perfectly. So in order to cut it, I'm just gonna line this up right here and you'll notice that for the three inch binding, this doesn't quite fit all the way. So I'm just gonna show you a quick workaround that we can do in order to get that cut. I'll cut my dog ear in right here on the end and you'll see that I can take this fabric right off of there so it'll have a clean cut. But obviously right here, we're not all the way cut in. So any straight edge, let's, let me grab a, a little narrower one. So we've got a little bit smaller one that'll make it a little bit easier. And I can just butt that right up against the plastic edge here. And I'm gonna flip it this way so it's flat. Just lay any straight edge right along there. And then I can just scoot this up. It's on the same angle exactly because I've already aligned it. And then I could just finish cutting that piece off. So let me show you what you get. You get this perfectly cut dog ear 45 degree angle. Now we obviously have two sides to our binding. So what we need to do is this other side has got to be able to fit like this and go the opposite direction. So I'll scoot these over. And in order to get that cut, it's actually pretty easy. If I cut one this way, then all I have to do is just flip it over and it will go the other way. I can literally just lay that on there and that'll show you exactly what that fit is. And so I'm just going to flip it so that instead of it being on the bottom of the sash, it'll be on this opposite side. So let's go ahead and we'll just straighten that out, get everything lined up. And I just have these few pins just to hold it while I was moving things around but we don't need those right now. So I would just line this up like that and I'm just gonna cut it that way. And again, if I line it right up on the edge, I won't even have to trim the dog ear right there. So I'll show you again, one more little workaround that we can do to get this full cut. Again, I can just flip this over flat, lay it right against the existing ruler right there. And once I take this off, now I have that full cut. So now I've got my perfect 45 degree angle with these beautiful little dog-eared corners. And I'll just show you real quick how they would fit together. So they're gonna go like this, just like that. So now I'm gonna take them over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna lay them together just like this, right? So let's use two different pieces and we'll actually match them up. So the quilt that I have needs about four pieces of binding in order to go all the way around. So they'll lay just like this. Let's bring this down a little closer for you. Okay. 
and then I'll just flip this one just like that. I'm going to line up the edge right here, right with the top, just like that. Now these edges are biased right here. That's a 45 degree angle cut. So we want to handle them gently. Don't be stretching them or manipulating them too much. Don't pull on them. Pick them up gently. And I'm just going to put a little weave of my pin right there. And the reason that I like to pin, we don't want this stretching out because we just said this is biased. It can. So the pin's function is just really to prevent any travel. As, as we're sewing, we don't want to push one side, the top or the bottom, further away from its partner. So by putting just a couple of these pins, just like that, we'll just weave it in. Then when I go over to the iron, I can just put that right under the sewing machine edge and I'll sew right down that. And then as soon as I get finished sewing, this is the whole tail right there. I'll literally just flip this one over and I'll have it exactly like that one. And I'll be able to put the very next piece right on top of it and align it. You, so once I get over to the sewing machine, we'll just sew um, and then we'll pin each one as we go. And that way you can see that process. So we're set up at the machine now. I'm gonna give you a few quick tips. Right now, the foot on my machine, this is my quarter inch foot and it actually has a little guide right here on the edge. I'm also going to be using my AccuFee on my machine, which is a walking foot action. So this has some feed dogs on the bottom of this foot, as well as the regular feed dogs. And they're gonna clamp the top and bottom of this and move all of these together. So when I sew, let's go ahead and put a little leader right underneath so we can have a really good stitch right at the beginning. We'll just fold up a little piece of fabric, a little scrap, and we'll just put that under there first. That'll help to anchor those threads and make sure that when we start sewing on our actual piece that we're gonna get a nice pretty stitch. So it's out of the way. I'll feed this in and I'm going to just lightly put it right against the guide right at the tip where we're aligned. Let me show you. As we're sewing with these two pieces together I'll bring this piece a little closer. If these are lined up right there, as I sew down, I should have my needle coming right through this point right here as we sew down this. So you'll be able to align that right there and look for that as soon as you put your fabric underneath your needle. Okay, so as I'm doing that, let's get myself aligned right there into that same position that I just mentioned. And as soon as I take that first stitch or so, then I can take this pin out before I get to it. And we'll just sew right down. It's gonna really evenly feed all my layers together. Notice how it's not bunching up right there. It's just keeping everything nice and smooth. And that's important because we don't want it to be pushing the top fabric down. We want those layers all aligned. So now my needle is here, my pin is out here. I'm really close to the edge, so I'll just take that out and let it feed the rest of the way right off the end. So if this is the end, I'll just show you real quick, this is the end. All I'm going to do is just take this edge and flip it over, and now that end is where we're gonna line up the next piece. So you can just do this as an assembly process this is already going to be the correct direction. We just flipped it over. And so whatever that tells you, we'll line up the next piece right on top of that so that it will match. Visually, you can do it like this and just flip it over. And that will make sure that you have the correct orientation so that all your pieces will lay correctly and not get twisted. Okay, so let's put another pin in right here. We'll just weave it for stability just a couple of times. And then again, line up this side as well, and we'll put another pin close down on this end to make sure that everybody's in their proper place. Okay, so we shouldn't have any gap or anything. Everybody should line up and lay nice and flat. And now we'll all just get this aligned under the foot. Lift it up, 
get this out of the way. I'm going to put it right under the needle, right up against it, and make sure that I'm right against the guide here. So once I get that little bit under there, I can pull that pin out, and I'll just align it right along the guide, right down to this pin, and then I can take that out. So same thing, this is the tail all the way down. I'll just pull it so you can see I'm not twisting it. Right when I get to the end, I'll just flip it over and that's it. And then this is the correct position for the next piece. And that'll also be the visual guide. Align it and then flip it over and line up your edges. Same thing on, on this end as well. Just get those lined right up and we'll be able to put that pin and just weave it in. Okay, we'll put all that extra back there. Pull that a little since it's already stitched all the way, it should be really easy to get it to move out of the way. So I'm right at the tip of that and I'll just take those few stitches and then I can take this out. Now that that is anchored with some stitches, we don't need that pin as much anymore. Okay, same thing here. And I can just make sure that that's staying in place right against the guide and so right off the edge. Let me clip a few of these threads and then we'll show you what we've got. That gives us our big long run of binding and then I'll show you from the back. We should be able to have these edges lined up very neatly and this side as well. Okay, so when we press that, it's going to be very, very flat on both edges. This will open up just a little bit, right? You can see that as that folds under. So I'm just going to press this to one side. Right When I lay it out, I'll do each one and I'll all press them the same direction as I lay them out. Okay, so we'll get that all set. And then once we're finished with that, we have one last thing to go. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna show you when we iron is once you've sewn, let's go ahead and press all of these seams before we open them out. And what that'll do is shrink up those fibers and it'll make everything stay together It'll give a nice crispness to this area. And then when we open it, that'll make it even easier for us to open up that seam and get that really nice press on there. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll scoot to the next one. You can just move it down with your iron. Right there, this is open. Okay, so we'll press it that way first, get this part pressed first and then we'll open it up. Let's scoot it down just a little bit for you. Right there, just put your iron on that first. Okay, and then we'll open it up. I think my iron's a little cool. Oh, no it isn't, it's plenty hot. Okay, so we're, we're pressed right there. Let's go on to our last one and we'll get that one finished up as well. I think I need two hands to get it aligned real quick. Scoot these over and we'll just do this last one. Okay, we just wanna let this part lay flat before we open it up. And then we can just pick up the edge and we'll just pull it back just like that. So I do have some students who have worried about if all the edges are lined up 100% exactly perfect. 
So this looks pretty good. To me, this aligns pretty well on each end. I'm not gonna be worried about that. If you have just a little difference right here, don't worry too much about that. As long as it's not super dramatic, you can even just grade it a little bit. What's gonna happen when we flip it over and we press it, it's going to even out a little bit because you've got the straight edge right there of the other side to line everything up with. So it's all gonna work out. Okay, don't be too much worried about very minor differences in the little edges, but you know, they should line up pretty nicely, which they do. So let's go ahead and we'll get this pressed. Start on one end and then let's just get a little bit of this press on here to get this started and we'll get the rest of it going. If you ever need a little help right at the beginning, you can always just stick a little pin in your ironing surface just to hold right at the edge there to get that going. Just kind of flatten it like that. And what that'll do is make sure that you can line up a couple of these edges to get you started so that you don't have to have your finger in there, okay? One thing about binding, if you're ironing with steam as you go, the steam will actually travel up this tube looking for a place to escape. So always be careful about getting your fingers kind of in that area or right on this side because that steam will escape. So I like to just be a little gentle and not necessarily stick my steam right in there and create a problem for myself. So then we'll just iron along and we'll get the whole thing done. Okay. okay, and then I'll press this whole thing and then we'll meet back over at our ironing station, at our uh, stitching station. So we'll be all ready to sew this on. So at this point, I've actually aligned the edges of the binding all the way around in order to make sure that the seams between the different sashing pieces on the binding are nowhere near the corner. I've checked each one and I know that they're in the middle of the space so that nothing is near the corner. That is really important because it's very, very difficult to flip your binding to the opposite side once you have a corner seam sewn in. It's just so bulky that it really makes it very, very difficult. So I've gone ahead and I've tested that and I'm gonna start with my tail where it is now. You can even put a little pin in the end if you need to just to make sure that it's gonna stay put. So we're about ready to sew the binding on. I'm gonna give you a couple of tips and I'm gonna show you just a tool that I have and you can see if you have something similar. So we're going to be sewing a half inch binding seam. And that means that our seam is a, is a half inch. It's thick, it's fat. So we can't use this quarter inch with guide anymore. This is not going to be a wide enough seam for what we need. So I, what I want you to do is I want you to find something where you have an open foot where you can adjust the width of your stitch by moving the needle left to right. So that's the foot that I'm gonna put on. And I'm still using the AccuFeed Flex, which is sort of a walking foot style, which is available for my machine. So to do that, I've just got to slide this on there and it should move freely and clip right in there. You'll see that right there is the action inside. Those are the feed dogs that essentially are on the top right there that will be walking the top fabric and then the regular feed dogs will be walking the bottom. So if you have a walking foot with an open toe like this that you can use, that would be a good option for you. And then we're gonna set the seam as best we can. So let me show you what we're gonna do. Let's put this on first. Go ahead and get our foot seated properly, centered nice and squarely. And then we'll tighten it up and just make sure it's on straight. Now, I've already put that pin in to hold my start place, just like we said. We lined everything up and I've got about a 10 inch tail on this side, right? This is the side that's left that will be secured at the end. So we're gonna start about 10 to 12 inches in from that edge. And this is approximately in the middle of the shorter end of this quilt. And that's just, you know, give, gives me some straight edge so that when I am gonna stitch these two pieces, the start and the ending tails together, it gives me a long flat area that I can do that without trying to 
cram it into a corner or something like that. All right, so let's talk about this half inch seam. A lot of times there may not be a really convenient, easy guide for you to use. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just put, let me lift this up real quick, get this under here. I'm gonna just lay this right here. And the very first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna mark that half inch seam. We're gonna use this. This is my little binding helper. You'll see we're gonna be using it quite a bit. I can actually align right there on that half inch and I can mark that area. Let's use something a little brighter. It'll show up well. I've got purple. So I'll just hold this right along the edge, right on that half inch, and I'm just gonna mark it a little bit like this. Really want it to be visible because we need to be able to see what we're doing. When I first start, I'm going to keep my needle right in the center position. So you can see right now it's right in the middle of the foot. And I'm going to change my stitch length to be quite a long length. Okay, so right now normal length is around two millimeters or so, something like that. I'm gonna make this as big as I can. So let's see how big I can make it. Right now, three, four, pretty big. About 4.5 millimeters. That is a basting stitch. And the reason I want it so big is I wanna be able to pull it out if I need to. So I'm gonna to try to stitch right on the line. So let's get a line on this purple line that we made. And I can see right now that this is gonna be pretty convenient with the edge of my foot, that it's right at a half inch. And I believe that if you have a Bernina walking foot, the Bernina walking foot has that same relationship. It's a half inch to the outside edge of the foot. You'll have to assess that based on your own machine, but look at how wide those stitches are. They're really, really long. So let's just cut that. What are we doing with this basting stitch? Why do we need that? When I flip this over to the other side, I don't want to guess if it's going to fit. I want to make it fit. So right now, before I do anything else, I can just take this little area that I've done and I'm gonna flip it over and just kind of press it with my finger a little bit. And I wanna see, can this remainder flip over and cover my seams? So let's turn it over and let's see what it'll do. Okay. So it's right here. I'll just flip this over and let's see what happens in the area where we've stitched. We'll lay it down. And I have to tell you, it's a little bit tight right there. Even for me to try to roll that over, it is not going to cover that very well. So because this stitch is really loose, I can pull it out. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to shift my, my fabric or anything like that. I'm going to keep it aligned but I'm going to move my needle over. And the reason that that works in this situation is then I still have a nice alignment on the foot, right on the very edge, and I just can move the needle inward to give me a little bit narrower seam, and then I can flip more easily, right? So if we were lined up right like this, and I'm right on the edge here with my needle right in the center, I just am gonna move the needle over, let's say about two or three clicks for me. So let's do two more. So my needle position was at 4.5, which is in the center of a nine millimeter foot. And now I've actually moved it over and let's move it over just a little bit more, I think. It has such a fine adjustment, but I really want a notable difference because that was a big difference. So we'll go from 4.5 to 5.5, and that's the position that I'm at now. And real quickly, I'm gonna pull those stitches out. They are very loose, so they should come out really easily. And now I can go ahead and stitch my next line. Does this seem like a lot of work? Well, maybe, but it's a lot more work to take your binding off if the binding doesn't fit once you sew it on, right? So what we're doing is we're making sure 
that it is 100% absolutely going to fit. We are force fitting it by making adjustments at the beginning only in this small little area and then I can sew all the way around and make sure that it's going to fit just fine. Okay, so again I'm lining it up right here and I still got that wide stitch so I'm just going to sew about two plus inches right along there and then we'll cut it and we'll see if this one will flip any better. Just to show you, this is how much narrower that it is. It is a little bit narrower, okay? So we have the ability now to pull this further and get this piece aligned. So let's see if that works. So right there, I think that is very, very pretty. I'll be able to, let me just show you where we are, right there. So I want it to just cover just like that. Okay, and just by making that little adjustment with our needle, we've made the ability to have this fit. Now the key on your part is going to be making sure that you align your foot the same. Whatever adjustments that you make, you need to be able to replicate that around the whole distance of the quilt. So now that I found my size, that my flip is gonna be perfect right there, and it's gonna be nice and pretty, just covering those stitches, Let's make sure that we put our machine back into regular stitch mode. Because right now it's 4.5 millimeters stitches in terms of thickness right there. You can see how far apart they are. We need them to be closer together. So I'm gonna set it now for two, which is about a regular stitch length. So I'm adjusting the length and I'm leaving the needle in the position that we've adjusted already. So for mine, I've moved it over to my right side and I've moved it one millimeter from 4.5 millimeters to 5.5. You may have a different adjustment because your batting might be thicker than mine or thinner than mine and your fabric might be fatter. This way we're adjusting the fit so that I know this binding, this batting, this quilt will fit perfectly. All right, so let's get aligned and we can start stitching this out. I can pull these stitches out if I want to, but for now they're just gonna anchor and I'll just stitch over them. Anything that shows when we're done, I can pull those out because it'll still be a little bit loose for those stitches. So lining it up right there on the edge, you can use whatever is appropriate for your machine, okay? You don't have to use, you know, my foot, but whatever you have that can approximate this same type of thing for you, then that's what you'll wanna use. So an open-toed walking foot, you know, with a wide area, not a straight stitch, and no guide is gonna let you put more fabric under that edge. For me, I'm gonna keep mine aligned right here, and I'm ready to go. All right, let's get aligned. And let's make sure my walking feature is activated, and it is, okay? So just go slowly, nice and easy. I'm keeping the edge of the fabric aligned right on the edge of the foot. That makes it really easy. Also, you can align your grid glider so that you can follow your fabric right along the edge of a grid glider. This is fantastic for doing that. So that is another option that you have if you don't have that walking foot feature. That'll let you have something to line up your fabric right along the edge and get a very nice, precise measure. Now, we're about to come in right to the corner. So what do we do when we're at the corner? Normally, we have markings on this foot that would tell you when you got to your quarter inch seam as you're gonna change directions. Well, for a half inch seam, we need some help. We need to know where to stop and pivot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little helper and he has a 45 degree miter right through the center. So I'm gonna lay that right along the edge there and just make sure that right there I'm aligned on the very tip of the fabric, right there on the corner. This seam is right along this edge. So right now I'm just gonna mark this so I have a strong visual of where I need to stop sewing. Okay, so the purple line tells me when I need to stop. So I just keep those little tools handy and they'll be really easy for me to use whenever I need them. 
So I'm watching as the needle gets to that purple line. One more stitch, I think. Okay, and then I'll just do a little back stitch, two, three, and come forward again. Now, another thing that is really convenient that will help you flip, you can actually lift up your fabric, and I'm gonna line up my purple line straight ahead, right down the edge of the needle. So it's right through the center there, and I'm just gonna sew right down the purple line, right off the edge. And then I can cut that thread. The benefit to that is that that gives you the little miter line and it encourages your fabric so that you can just flip it. So what we'll do now is, if this is my line, I'm gonna flip this right back along the miter line, like that, and I wanna square it up. I wanna make sure that this is properly placed. One of the things that we can do with this little helper is we actually can lay him right on there and the fabric right here should fit right along the miter. So if I need to make a little adjustment right there to get all my edges lined up, I should be able to see the fabric right along that miter line. So let's see if we can get you a really good view of that. Okay. So that center line that goes right through my square, I should be able to have all my fabric right exactly aligned on that and that tells me then that my miter is really clean. So I'll just hold this for a second, and right here on the edge, I'm just gonna fold this over, and I'll line it up. So I'm looking to make sure that none of this fabric sticks out over the edge. I want a nice, tight fit right close to the edge right here, right on this fold. So I'll just look and make sure that I have that on both sides. And then I'm just going to put a little pin in there to hold that. Okay, so that'll hold it as we're moving around and we get everything together. So I'll just flip it so you can see there's the edge right there and it's pretty well lined up. See if I hold it just like that. Okay, so all these edges are perfectly lined up. And here's how big our seam is. Just to show you, that's really what we need in order to have that flip. You can even see, like, how big is that actually? So pretty close to that half inch. It's just slightly inside that. So I'm gonna call that a scant half inch, okay? All right, so we've got it flipped. Let's go ahead and put it underneath our foot and get aligned, and then we'll be ready to sew. So right here, I'll get a couple of these edges lined up so we'll be ready. And put this right under there. And it's okay if the needle is going to take the very first stitch actually into the fabric. I think that's useful because then it won't have to come up onto the bump, it can just start sewing with it actually in the fabric. I've lined it up right here on the edge, just like we did before, and then I'll slowly encourage it, and then I can take that pin out. Now everybody's anchored with those few stitches, nobody's going anywhere, and I can just go ahead and sew down. So keep all your fabric up on the top so there's no pulling. Sure that our fabric can feed nice and smooth. Okay, and then we'll keep aligning it all the way around. So I'm going to line up those edges nice, make sure everybody's where they need to be. just keep aligning all the way around. 
The one thing I like about the AccuFeed Flex is that action of the top and bottom feed really helps you get a very nice, clean feed. So we don't have any buckling or bubbling or anything like that. Everybody's gonna be right in their place very nicely and very smoothly. So it's like having a free hand, an extra hand. It does some of the work for you. So we're checking our alignment each time as we're sewing. I'm just looking to keep that alignment right along that edge. Now we're getting down close to the edge. We're going to do that same thing with our little binding helper. So this is just the two and a half inch square. And I'm going to put the miter right along the center right here, the middle, that 45 degree angle, and checking right there for the tip so everybody is aligned perfectly. And then I'll make that very visible purple mark. That just really helps you have an idea of where you're going to stop so you can see really well. Okay, that tells me when I'm going to stop as I'm sewing down. So I'm just going to keep a watch right inside that foot. Make sure I don't go over it. I think one more stitch. Perfect, I'm right in the line. And if it would go over, like if you know that one stitch would go over, then just don't take it. You can actually lift up the foot and position the needle right on the line, and then you'll have that perfect fit. So at this point, we'll lift it up, and we're gonna rotate it, and I'll line up my purple line right down the center for me. So the very tip of that is straight ahead, and I'll just sew right off of the end. We'll do that same thing. That encourages this to turn. We've got the pretty miter right there. And now I'm gonna check it and make sure that I have it exactly aligned. Some people don't you know, wanna worry about it. They're not needing that level of perfection. One of the things that I like about checking this is that if I do this properly, I know that my miter is going to flip really beautifully. So I've got this aligned right on the center line there. And then I'll hold it in place. Just kind of scoot this over, put my finger there. And now I can flip this and get a really nice position right there on the corner. So I may have to scoot this down just a little bit so that I don't have too much fabric in there. I want it right on the edge. So I can pick it up and check it right there, make sure that nothing's hanging over. And then I'll put my pin in right there. Okay, so I can see my edges are all lined up right there, nice and pretty. And then we're ready to go. So again, let the first stitch be on the fabric. I'm using the edge right here so I can lower that down, make sure that I'm aligned right on the edge of the foot, and then put your needle in, and you'll be fine right here just to go ahead and tack that and to start stitching, okay? Once I get just a few stitches, I wanna get this aligned so that I can start sewing down the line and making sure that I'm right on the edge Okay, and then I can take this out. I want a few stitches in there because I want to make sure that it's holding like it should. So keep checking right here. Make sure that you're keeping yourself aligned, that it's not getting too wide. So it's a little bulkier right here because of all the extra fabric right in there. This has got seam on each side. And that's what that sound is, that kind of thunk, 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 is just that it's going over a little bit of a thicker seam area. So we'll just keep going. Do the same thing, get it aligned all the way down to the corner. And 
when I get close, I'm going to use my little binding helper again, and I'll make that miter mark. It's important to use something that you can see really well when you're doing that so that you know where your mark is. If you can't see it, it's really not helping you at all. So I'm right on the edge here, and I'm checking right here that I'm right at the corner and making sure there's no slack in that because we want to make sure that our corner is measured accurately. So just make sure there's no added um, fabric in here as you get down to your miter. So there's our line right to the corner. I can see the little blue tip right there. So I'm watching inside my foot and just being careful. I think I got at least one more, maybe one more stitch. Okay, perfect. I like to back stitch it just a little bit and then we'll stitch back. That's just a little reinforcement for that area. I think one more. Okay, and now we'll pivot, get it aligned with that purple line straight forward so we can sew right off the end. Right there. Okay, and we'll just sew right off the end. Okay, so let's go ahead and align that right there. We've got that pretty miter right there. And let's put our little helper back on, right to the corner, right to the tip. I'm getting this edge and this edge aligned, and this line should go right down the center. And if it doesn't, you could just give it a little tug to make sure that he's aligned perfectly. So we're right on that line exactly. So I'll just scoot it over and then fold this back. Okay. And I'm gonna check my alignment here. I'm going to pull it towards us so you can see as well. So right there, I've got the edges lined up right there, and then I can put that pin in and make sure that this edge is also aligned on this side as well. And that just holds all of that work that we just did in place until we can get a few stitches right there. I'm going to lower the foot so I can get my fabric aligned right here on the edge. I want the first stitch actually in the fabric so I'm aligned and my needle is in. And then I'll do just a little bit of tacking real quick as we start. And then get a few stitches down the road before I take that pin out. Okay. So I'm not sewing over the pin, I'm just trying to trying to get close to it get up close to the edge of the pin so i don't usually pin this or clip it because what i want is the walking foot to do the work of making sure that it's feeding together so i sometimes think if i try to use a clip or a pin that it's going to force fabric in there that i don't necessarily want i want a nice tight fit and the walking feature is giving me that so I'm down to the last corner. Let's go ahead and mark that and we'll get that nice pretty corner. So there's my little binding aid right there. I'm just going to use this and mark it. Make sure I can see it really well. It's a little bit hard on this multi-print fabric, but still it's going to look good. So as I get closer, I'm going to slow down a little bit so I can get right to my purple line. One more stitch, I think. And then we'll back stitch. And let me check and make sure. Yeah, we're right on the line, so that's perfect. All right. Yep, looks good. Let's pivot. And we'll get that purple mark aligned right with the center position right there. Right there. Okay, let's 
and sew right off the center. All right, so let's align this last corner and then we'll be almost toward the end and we'll get ready to close everything. So I've lined it up right there and I'm gonna check that miter, make sure it's aligned beautifully so we get a really nice closure there, right there. So I also wanna check the edges here, make sure that I'm lined up on both sides really nicely. Oh, it looks good. Okay, so scoot it just a little, hold this, and then we'll just flip it right there. Okay, make sure our edges are lined up right there. So as I go, I don't want any excess fabric aligned right here in this edge, so I wanna check that and make sure before I put that pin in right there. Okay. So we're at the corner and we're all set. I've got the needle aligned. The pin is right there. So let's kind of get our fabric straightened up right on that line. And I'll put those tacking stitches in as we start. And now we can go ahead and continue sewing. A couple of stitches and then I'll take that pin out. That just gets us going. I've got everything lined up right here, right along the edge, nice and secure. And let's go ahead and stitch up a little bit. Now we are on the last leg of that binding. Here we go. And I'm just gonna keep making sure the quilt can move freely with me. So this, all of this right here, we're getting down to the end. We don't have that much further to go. Right, so um, I'm going to stitch probably about to right here, and that'll let us have enough room to get our ends secured together. So I'm also going to show you guys how to do that, how you can go ahead and stitch your ends together and plan exactly what you need to to get everybody to fit perfectly. So right here is where I'll stop, and there's about... 10 inches in between my two spaces where I started and where I've ended. So I'm gonna tack this off. And I'm gonna leave the machine settings exactly where it is at that five and a half millimeters with the needle shifted over just slightly. I'll go ahead and cut these threads and take this out. All right, so let me show you where we're at. We'll give you a little different view so you can get oriented. So this is where we are. This one opens up a little bit more. Okay, this is that 10 inches, and I want to connect these two. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is probably go about half, halfway, and I wanna just line this up on the edge and get it fairly secure with a pin, because I want that area to be very, very clearly secured to the right amount of fabric to fit right here. I don't want it to, to be loose, but not too tight. I want it to lay flat and be secured. So right here, what I want is, I wanna take off this dog-eared corner. When I'm using the bound to fit tool, I don't have to take it off. I actually have a nice marked measure line that I can use to connect my two tails. But on this one, this is a three inch binding and I don't have that same marking available. So I wanna just square this off. So I'll just mark it really quick with my straight edge and I'll cut it so we can have a nice clean line. All right, let's pin this. We 
want him to stay right in place, nice and smooth, so that we can measure the other side. Okay, so he's all ready to go. This side now, when we lay this on here, I need to have this piece overlap exactly the same width of my binding. And this will work for any binding, but especially here, we need to make sure that we have that three inch measure, right? So I'm gonna line it up right to the very edge, make sure that it's secure, that it's not a waffly or with a lot of extra fabric eased in there. So let's go ahead and we'll pin this as well right at the match. So let's flip it over. We'll line up these two edges right there. Okay, so that's a nice secure fit. Can you see that these are matched right up right there and I've just flipped it over? Now on this side, I'm going to measure and mark at that three inches that I need. So let's use this. So I've got my three inches right there, you can see. So I'll just line the line up right on that fold area right there. I'm aligned right here and I'll square up the end. Make sure everybody's aligned. And then I can make that mark right there on the very end. Okay, that's the three inches that I need in order to connect these two tails. Let's cut it off and I'll show you what else we're going to do. All right. So right now, let's look really quickly for one of our little tails. So he's going this way, right? So we want to match that. We want the next connection that we're creating to have the same orientation. So let's figure it out. Let's unpin this really quickly and this side as well. When we put the tails together, this is the right overlap. We know that we've measured it correctly. So I wanna pull this open. Okay, I'm gonna just pull this back just a little bit. We need a little bit more room, I think. So just take this and you're gonna fold on the miter right there like that. And this you're gonna press with your iron. I would fully press it and then open it like this. I mean, fold it up like this. So this is what ultimately it's gonna look like, right? All these corners should match right here and it's gonna lay just like that. Okay, so let's take this side and we'll just pin this down for the moment, get this to stay. And usually I test it all like this, make sure the fit is good and then you can bring it over to your iron after you get both sides finished. So for right now, I'm just gonna pin this and that, that way this will stay in place. Okay, so we've got one side and right now we can see this seam is gonna go the correct direction. We want it to go angling that way just like the other one. So then on this side, same thing. If this one is folded with this corner going up towards the top, this is the fold line then this one has to go the opposite way. It's going to have to fold down in order to fit. Okay, so I'll just kind of press this with my finger and then we'll just fold this part up like this. Okay, so right there and I can just lay it on there just like that and it should fit exactly correct. So when I lay both sides together and I get them to lay down, so I'll stick another pin in this one just to make sure that he'll stay. And then here you can already see that both of those tails will lay down together and that they should fit really well together. So I can tell that there's not a lot of excess fullness or anything right there. It's all gonna be perfect in terms of how much space there is. These are a good fit. I haven't sewn anything, so if I need to make an adjustment, I can. 
you know, if this was overlapping a little bit, you could just shave off a little bit and make it tighter. But ultimately what we're trying to get is we're trying to get this look right here where the connection is. And it looks like we're going to be able to have that very, very nicely right there. Okay. So at this point, since it's pinned, I would go ahead and maybe separate them a little bit and make sure that this is, is cleaned up. Just scoot this down over here and make sure my corner matches really well. And I just take that to the iron and press it. And that way, right at that fold line, you're gonna have a really nice fold. So we'll go ahead and do that and we'll meet back here and we'll finish up the rest of this and finish the whole binding. So I finished pressing these, so I'm gonna just take the pins out and let's show you what we have at this point. Okay, we'll open this back up. And we have the 45 degree right there. I'll open it up. And right along this diagonal, that is our stitch line right there. Okay, so if that doesn't have a really good crease, if you don't feel like you can see that really well, you can go ahead and just take that back to the iron. Go ahead and press that very securely because you need that vision. So there we go. We got a nice, strong line that we'll be able to see really well right there. Okay, now let's open out the other side. It's the same thing on this side. We'll open that out and we should be able to have a nice strong visual on that side as well. We can see this fold line really easily. Okay, so let's do it like this. Leave it folded. Leave this side folded. You're basically going to put these two together just like that and when I open it out, I'm going to put a little pin in this area because these want to pull apart. So let's just pinch this like that and get these two to stay together. So let's get a pin and we'll pin that together. That just helps the two edges stay together because then these don't pull apart as much. I just feel like that's a little bit easier to manage. It does want to pull apart so if you need to you can just stick another pin in there. That way they can work together. All right, so let's go back to where we were. Right there and right there. And the key here is making sure that when you open them out, you're not twisting them. Just like we laid them out, that's how they're going to stack together like this, putting these two sides together. Can you see that a little better? So making sure that we just open that out and there's the fold. And then when we finish it, we're going to be closing that back up after we stitch it. So that's how we can really make sure that we're not twisting that binding when we're stitching the two ends together. Okay, so let's put them together. And now I'm just going to open that. And then we're ready to go. Right there, we already have the correct orientation. So I'm just going to line up the corners. And I'll put a pin right in there. Now I'll show you where I'm going to put my pin. I'm going to put it on the side of my stitch line like this. Okay, the stitch line is right through there and I'll get both sides lined up so that this corner matches and that this corner matches on the bottom and just make sure that this part is laying flat, right? It's a little bit tricky to get everybody to open up, but it's going to work out really well. So here, these two ends are together. We'll go ahead and just pin all the way down. And we're leaving room for us to stitch corner to corner right through that spot. Okay, so now let's orient on the sewing machine. And I'll get this back edge flat as well. And just make sure that I'm aligned right here at the corner also. So it kind of wants to come up, up a little bit. So I'll adjust it. And right through there. So I'm aligning right on the center. My needle is right at that tip point. Make sure he's flat, which he is. Okay. Now, we adjusted our settings. Our needle isn't in the center, right? So right now, I'm going to make some adjustments really quickly and just go back to basic straight stitching with this. 
and just sew straight. That way I can make sure that it's gonna feed evenly and the needle's right in the center. Anytime you're moving your needle position, that's something that's important for you to remember whenever you're switching different styles because then you might not have your needle in the correct place. So I'm letting this ride right down the center. That'll get me right in that fold, in that stitch line. And if you can't see it, you can always mark that line. So I'm gonna pull this pin because it's kind of shifting with me. So it wasn't a little far enough out. And just make sure I've got the very tip right down here, nice and aligned so that when I sew through, it'll go right through the tip right there. All right, we'll cut this and pull that out. Now, let's take the pins out. Those pins were just to allow us to kind of move that other fabric out of the way. And now we're testing it. We want to make sure that this is going to fit nicely. So just tuck that in there. Don't cut anything yet. Right? And I'm just going to fold that in and I'll lay it right on there. To me, this is a good fit. Right? There is no buckling. There's no anything uh, flapping. If I put a few pins in this, I'll be able to sew and complete this entire binding perfectly. And I won't have anything kind of stretchy or anything else that's sticking up. If you look at that, that's a nice smooth fit. And you see there's our stitch line, the same as the others. At this point, I would go ahead, I'll take these pins out, and I'm going to go ahead and trim this excess off at the quarter inch. So I'll just, you know, get these aligned. I'm gonna cut that off and I'll just press it to one side like that, okay? Let's go ahead and we'll take care of that and we'll meet back here, I'll show you it so you'll know exactly what it's gonna look like. So we're trimmed, we're flat, everything is pressed. And before I sew, I wanna put a few pins in. I don't want any travel happening. So even though we're using the walking foot, I'm just gonna make sure that everything here is pinned evenly. So pin in the center and then pin towards the stitch lines on both sides. So pin in the middle. And then I think we need probably one more right here. This is really useful if this is just slightly bigger, you know, if there's a little bit of fullness, then this way you can make sure that it's balanced and not bunching up into one spot. Mine is pretty flat, but sometimes you may get just a little bit of, of looseness. And one of the things that'll help take that up is also making sure that you press this before you sew. That'll make sure that everybody's laying down nice and flat, and that'll get you exactly what you need. So right now, let's go ahead and get ourselves reseated back into our existing spot, right where we were with the edge of the fabric. So let's put this down. Make sure we're aligned right there. Now, I need to go back to my needle position where I had it adjusted before. Okay, so you saw that the needle just moved over and I wanna make sure that I'm in the existing stitch line where I was before. Let's make sure we're in the right spot. We'll come back just a little further, make sure we can get it aligned. I'm okay if I want to stitch over just a little bit extra, just to make sure. All right, and we'll tack it, and then here we go. So making sure that I've got this edge lined up nice, that'll help us meet the next part as we go. Taking the pin out. Okay, 
and I want to make sure that I'm matching right here. So as I'm getting towards this, I'm going to ride the opening right here, right along there, so that our stitches will match right there. Okay, and we'll back stitch that too. Oh, failed to take that out, darn it. But fortunately, I didn't run over anything. Let's cut this and we'll see where we're at. Let's cut some threads. We got a lot of threads here. So we'll cut some of these, get these out of our way. All right, looks good. Everybody is in place. We're totally joined and we're totally flat, which is all we really wanted. So let's go ahead and flip it over and we can double check, you know, are we getting that nice fit that we wanted? Because we did check it at the beginning, but we're gonna end up having to stitch it on. So we gotta check everything, right? And that's gonna fit really nicely right there. You can see it's, there's the stitch line right there and there's our fold and it's nice and clean at a half inch. So what I'm gonna do now is we've used the glue-based, Roxanne glue-based, I'll show you it, right here. You can also use clips, you can also pin. If you don't wanna glue, you can actually do some pinning. And I'll show you, you wanna go in the direction that you're gonna stitch, so you would just match up some of this right here, and you're just gonna pin this way, like that, so that the stitch is folded over, and what we want is we want to sew like this and have it under the foot so we can take the pins out as we go. So they would need to orient this way as you sew. On the corners, you want to make sure that you pin, okay? There's too much pressure on the corner. So right here, I'll just flip this over. It's a nice square corner, so this should tuck right into the corner. We shouldn't need to clip it or anything. And you're going to fold this side first. Okay, and how can you tell? Because that's where it's a little bit bulkier. You can feel it on this side that the bulk is on this side. So fold that corner first, get this all covered like that, right? Nice and smooth. And you can just stick a pin right here just to hold that right on the miter. And then I think it's worth also one more pin on this side, okay? What that does is it holds the fabric so it's not pulling right here as we're trying to match up this other side. Okay, so right along this seam right there is the fold. Not in the middle here, it's right there. And we'll get this whole piece folded over, tuck everybody in. And what we're doing is we're trying to match the miter nice and pretty like that. So once we do, we've got both tails connected and you can get this to fold just a little bit more if necessary. And then I'm just gonna pin that miter right there. So I don't want him going anywhere, right? So he's held in position. And then again, same thing. If I want these areas with a little extra support right as we're coming in, I can just put another pin and just orient it so that you can pull it out as you're sewing, right? Just like that. And then when this goes under the foot, He's gonna be oriented in this way so I can just pull the pin as I go. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of this seated and then we'll talk about how do we top stitch this. Okay, I'm gonna get everybody seated in place. I'm gonna do my glue base so that I don't have as many pins to work with, trim any threads, get everybody nailed down and then we'll top stitch it. All right, so I have secured all of the edges of the binding some pins are in the corner right here just to hold everything. There's a little bit more pressure on the corners. So I feel like pins are a good option there. I've done some gluing. So you can see there's maybe a little glue residue, but it's all water soluble. It'll come off. And that's gonna make it easy for us to sew around quickly and not have to move any pins out of the way. Let's lift this up really quick. So right now the needle is set pretty much at the same position that it was when we were stitching all of this binding down at that half inch seam that we had measured to make sure we could flip everything beautifully. 
So that means that on the back, I know exactly where that stitch is. So before we make any adjustments, let's go ahead and test our top stitch really quickly. So I'll put the foot down. I want the edge of the fabric just like it was before, tightly against the edge of the foot here. And I'm looking to make sure that the needle's actually stitching on the binding and top stitching close to the edge. So that's really what I want. So in addition to that, I might have some variations in the width, but I want the top stitch to stay close to this edge. So I'm going to align the inside of this binding on the inside of this foot. So you can use whatever you have that is similar to that to get yourself the alignment. Because the binding may be a little wider, but people will notice if the top stitching is wider. They won't notice if the binding itself is wider, but if you have a big flip right here and then a little bit of stitching and a big area and a little bit on this side, they will notice. So right now, what I'm gonna do is I've already set the machine to stitch about five millimeters in stitch length. So you'll see it's gonna actually go really fast. So I wanna look right along that inside edge, keep everything lined up, and let's see how this stitches. Do I need to move my needle over, or does it look great? You know, we could be lucky. Maybe it'll look perfect. So it is a loose stitch, of course, because this is a basting stitch. But that is pretty nice. I don't mind having it close like that. And let's see what happens on the other side. So let me pull this thread out so we can see it. So right there, it's pretty close. We definitely want it on the binding. So it's possible that we could actually move this in a stitch or two, because I'd like it to be more on this side. And if it's a little deeper on this side, that'll look fine as well. And you can see there is a slight difference, you know, between the two sides, because this side is the flip right here that we're stitching. So this is the side that's not tacked in, and this is the seam allowance that's already stitched. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna move my needle over about two clicks, and I'll just pull this out so we don't have anything in our way visually. Fortunately, this is so loose, it'll be easy for us to pull it out. So I just gotta grab it, right? And then just pull it out. Oh, it's been a little tough, but it'll come out. We'll go ahead and take care of that, and then we'll go ahead and try again. Make sure that we have a nice, good, clean stitch on both sides, because that's really what we want. So let's move it over about two clicks and we'll see what that does. So for me, two clicks is 5.7 millimeter stitch. And again, we'll use the same alignment here on the inside pretty much, making sure that this edge of the stitching is touching the inside of this right foot, right toe on this. And you can also look and see, you know, where is the needle touching? Do I need it to be a little bigger or not? Okay, so let's try it and we'll see what it looks like. So again, a large stitch, it's gonna travel pretty far. And then we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so there's the one side and I think it looks fine. And there's the other side. So I think I'm gonna actually take it up maybe two more three more. So this will be six millimeters for me. And let's go ahead and stitch now. I think we're good. We're definitely inside on both of them. So I think it's going to be fine. I also have um, 60 weight thread in here. So the thread's not super heavy. And that'll let it stitch really, really easily. So let's get inside a little bit. I'm lining up again on the inside of the toe right there. And I'm now I'm going to make sure I change my stitch length and I'll put it back down to the normal stitch, which is about two millimeters or so. So making those adjustments real quick. All right, and let's get stitching. So again, no fast stitching. You're looking to just keep everybody in their place, nice and easy, and make sure that all of your quilt comes with you, because if it's pulling even a little bit, our top stitch is pretty narrow. We don't want any torquing that's gonna 
make this stitch not happen in the right spot. So make sure you put it up on your sew steady table, give yourself a little bit of room, and we'll just use that inside alignment of the foot right there. We're looking right here to keep that stitch nice and tight on the top stitch. So you can hear it's kind of thick, and that's because there's a lot of layers that are going through it. We've got the binding two layers. We've got two layers of fabric. We've got the batting. That's quite a few layers. And anytime that we would go over something like this, where we have that little sashing, it's gonna have even more. Just watching the inside alignment right on the right side of that toe, keeping the edge right here aligned right there. If you had a stitch in the ditch foot or even an edge stitch foot, you can use that and you can shift your needle position over. Notice here I've got the pin, so as I get closer to this, I'm going to go ahead and pull the pin. He can go under there without getting stitched in, but he'll create a little bit more pressure, so I don't want that, so I'm just gonna double check, make sure I'm aligned right here. We'll keep going. Ooh, it's a little bulky there, huh? You can really hear the difference. Okay, so again, as we're getting closer, I'm gonna hold this in case that doesn't have any glue or anything like that. Make sure as we come up to the miter that we stitch right to the very center. I'm watching this pin. Now all of that miter fold is underneath the foot so I can pull this out and I'm just gonna stitch up until I'm on the other side of the miter. Maybe one more. Okay, now I can just lift up the foot, we'll adjust this position, and it's the same thing. I want to check that I'm aligned right in the same spot, right? So getting my fabric aligned right on the inside of that toe, start off a little slowly, make sure I've got a good position, and then I can adjust my fabric so I can move a little more quickly. Make sure you're keeping your eye right there. That's what we're looking to keep everybody aligned. So don't let your vision wander off into some other area because then you'll look back and you'll be like, wait, we're supposed to be aligned on this side. So real slowly, I've got a couple of pins here. So I want to get in a little tighter. But I've got that miter right underneath there. So one more stitch and we'll be ready to go. And I'm checking my position, so I'm just gonna get aligned one or two stitches, start really slowly right here, and then I'll pull this out. Just a little bit longer. So obviously if the quilt is bigger, this is harder because there's more to manage, there's more bulk, you have to adjust the quilt a little bit more frequently, but this system will still work for any size quilt. So right here, there's a pin. I pinned this area because right where the sashing is, it tends to be a little thicker, a little bulkier, and I just wanted to make sure that was gonna lay down nicely as I got to it, so. show you something as we get a little further along. I can tell that this one area maybe is not pulled over as nicely as I'd like it to be. So rather than just allow it to do its own thing, 
I'm going to make an adjustment and I'll show you. Okay, so I don't know if you can see right here, this has a little bit of a gap. So it's not quite laying over. You can just pull up that glue right now and we'll just pull it over a little bit. And as we run it under there, I'm just going to make sure that it stays pulled over so that it covers that stitching, make sure it's aligned properly. And get all the way down to that miter. So right there, pull that out. One, two, and then we'll flip it. We're almost finished. We're real close to the edge here. Let's get that down. Okay, and we'll pull that. Okay, and we're on that, I think the last leg of this. So we'll get this aligned. So keep it. Keep it aligned. Make sure that everybody's moving with you nice and smooth. Okay. We're getting close to the end, so we'll just finish it up. into the last miter so we'll just pull this last pin here get right to that miter okay one two three and I think I'm right at the end there so we'll just hold this thread out of the way and get that last little bit done We're just about to connect. So right now, I'm just going to overstitch it a few stitches. Try to be right in the same stitch line. And then we'll just back up, put a little back stitch on there. And we'll cut. So I'm going to flip it. This is the back side. So I think it looks pretty even. Pretty good, I'm very happy with how it looks. And then let's flip it to the front. And there's the front of it. So you can see it looks equally good, I think. So it's a very fine thread. It's covering pretty nicely. This is the flip side right here. This is that seam even underneath. You can see just a tiny bit of it. Not enough that I am worried about that. So if you're looking for you know, show quality, maybe this is not the appropriate technique but this is very secure. I think it looks nice and it's gonna give you that ability to use your machine to finish off that binding. So at this point, the quilt is finished. We'll kind of pan out a little bit and we'll just show you the whole. So there you go, that's our beautiful quilt. We're all finished, it's totally bound and it fit perfectly. We have no tucked in tails. Everything is completely seamed together. So hope you enjoyed this binding lesson. Have a great day and happy quilting.